What's up, you guys? Sean Ross Sapp here for the official Wrestling Inc. podcast alongside Wrestling Inc. founder Raj Geary. After a pretty pretty big Hell in a Cell pay-per-view, we had a lot of matches that we'd seen before. Uh, but all in all, I thought this was a very good show. Uh, Raj, what did you think of the show as a whole? Yeah, I, thought, I thought it was good. I mean, I thought the... Uh the main stuff delivered, uh, the two cell matches and, uh, the Alberto Del Rio, um, uh, surprise was, was good too. So I think just those three things alone made it a uh, thumbs up for me. Yeah. We started off with a, uh, trios match. I guess you could call it Rusev, King Barrett and Sheamus taking on Neville, Dolph Ziggler and Cesaro. I really like the pairing of Rusev, Sheamus and Barrett because none of them were going anywhere. So you might as well put them together, and if they're going to go nowhere, at least uh, they'll be a formidable trio. After this match, I kind of want to see a Cesaro-Neville tag team if they're not going to do anything with them either. It looks like, but the only downside of that is it looks like Cesaro is about to feud with Stardust, and I don't want Neville anywhere near Stardust ever again. Um, yeah, I thought this was a good, fast-paced opener. Yeah, yeah, it was. Uh, it was. It was a fun match. Um... You know, I really wish they would do more with Cesaro. I mean, it, it's kind of sounding like a broken record, but, uh, you know, a feud with Stardust is, you know, kind of a, uh, feels like a demotion uh, as opposed to, but, you know, it gives them something to do at the same time, and, and they obviously have no plans to push him, so. Yeah, indeed. Uh, either way, um, the Babyfaces got the win in this match. Neville hit one of the best red arrows I've ever seen. He absolutely stuck yeah, that, that was thing. awesome. It was as good of a red arrow as you will ever see, guys. It was, it was just, it was just fantastic. Um, next up, we had the John Cena Open Challenge, and people had speculated for quite a while uh, as to who would answer this Open Challenge. People had speculated an NXT talent. As it turned out, they were running matches uh, while. WWE was about to run Hell in a Cell, so that wasn't a possibility. Uh, Dean Ambrose ended up not being the man. Instead, Zeb Coulter came out to Jack Swagger's music on a scooter of all things, which fits the Zeb Coulter character perfectly, in my opinion. And he introduced his new, I I guess it's uh, his new client in Alberto Del Rio, who made his return to the WWE. Yeah, I I was... uh nervous there for a second thinking it was going to be jack swagger and i was like oh man that's that's going to be brutal um and then that's no disrespect to swagger but just as far as a surprise and everything goes um but yeah yeah it uh storyline wise it doesn't make any sense yet um considering you know how bad their feud was and everything and and uh zeb coulter all of a sudden being you know almost like a a, a democrat out there the anti-trump <laughs> just seemed uh Seemed weird, but you know, uh, we'll we'll see where they go. It's it's kind of hard to tell if they're uh, heels or baby faces because I mean, he was working tonight as a face, but that was going to happen. But it, I think Zeb Coulter is a lot more effective as a heel. So. Yeah, I'm really excited to see how Zeb Coulter explains this, and I'm sure he can do it because Zeb Coulter's great. But uh, yeah, this was a rather quick match too. It was about eleven, twelve minutes maybe. Del Rio got the win with just a a kick. Just a super kick to uh, Cena's face while Cena was on his knees. Um, this was, you know, this is a good thing. I think putting Del Rio with Zeb Coulter for whatever reason they did it because before he left, he was incredibly stale. Uh, him getting fired definitely reinvigorated his career, and getting fired was the best thing that ever happened to him. He he became a huge draw again in Mexico because you know he had a lot of. A lot of pride for what he did in standing up for somebody making a stupid comment backstage. Now he's back. He's immediately given a win over John Cena. He's given a new manager. Uh, the the Rec- Ricardo stuff had run its course. I uh, thought the match was just fine, just a little bit short. I had a lot of people saying it reeked of desperation. I was like, well, I don't agree with that because they had a Mexican tour a week and a half ago. If they reeked of desperation, then they would have put him on that tour. And I'm sure that uh, the event planners or whatever it was that had issues with WWE, they they definitely wouldn't have been upset about that. But there might be somebody upset. We don't know yet. Uh, Del Rio is still the AAA mega champion. Yeah, I think he... Um, 
think they had a they posted something on on their site um the triple a dorian uh rolled on rolled on, rolled on uh posted something on twitter so we'll uh We'll make sure to post that. Story. Yeah, I'll, I'll check it out. Uh, yeah, he he did. He just I just saw that. I don't have the translation yet, but he did tweet about Del Rio and the WWE and AAA. Um, it looks like he said, uh, and now Del Rio is champion in WWE and Lucha Libre. Soon there will be more news. That's really about all he said. But uh, yeah, it seems like that was. Well, it's definitely not him going to CMLL like uh, Sin Cara, Mystico, Mystic 2.0, Mist Disease did. So right. it seemed uh, the fact that it was commented on in that manner j- lends me to believe it's like it, that they made some sort of agreement. Uh, yeah, when, hard- I, when, when I interviewed him last month, he it definitely sounded like uh, it was going to happen. Uh, he, he yeah, was, he was very uh, favorable. You know, talking well about the company was careful not to say anything really negative and and um yeah you, you could kind of see the wheels were kind of already in in motion a little bit yeah and obviously he can't he he won't be able to do lucha underground if he is uh in WWE and they have major budget cuts anyway it's hard hard for me to believe that they could have afforded him uh but i wonder what this means for his MMA commentating gig yeah, yeah, I don't know. Um, I, I don't even. I don't even know if that show is still going. Um, I mean, is it? I have not. I, I don't know. I've, I've not watched it. I'm gonna. I'm gonna check that out though. I'll find that out. Um, but yeah, this was a big surprise, and I thought it would. It was. It definitely lived up to it because a lot of times WDB will do that to us, like a few weeks ago or maybe a month or ago, whenever it was, when Big E answered the open challenge, and we all like Big E in the new day, but. That wasn't appropriate for the build it was given and the type of situation and the platform it was given in a main event of Raw. This was put on right after a six-man tag match that had a match full of guys that people speculated might be answering the challenge. Uh, you know, the one guy who really loses out on this is Dolph Ziggler, who's still stuck as a stale baby face in the lower mid card now. Yeah. So un- unfortunate for him, but. Maybe that'll change down the line. Uh, but anyway, Alberto Del Rio's back. Uh, yeah, no more. Well, I don't know if I guess he's still Alberto, Alberto El Patron in AAA, but yeah, back yeah. to his old Del Rio name. Yeah, yeah, we'll have to. Yeah. Do you yeah. think that he'll do a U.S. Open challenge and that Mirko Krokop will answer the challenge? No, I, I don't. I don't see that happening. Well, I, I, I'm sure that Alberto Del Rio hopes it doesn't happen. Yeah. Uh, he doesn't want to relive, relive that. Uh, next up was Roman Reigns versus Bray Wyatt in a Hell in a Cell match. Uh, this was kind of advertised as the blow-off match, but you never know what'll happen there. I thought this was a really good match. They beat the absolute hell out of each other. Uh, Roman Reigns just takes beatings and beatings and beatings. And I don't know if WWE thinks that that will, like, gain him sympathy or get him fans and stuff. I already like the dude. But I get the feeling that people who don't like him by now probably aren't going to like him anyway. Yeah. But I thought it was a good match, though. Yeah, no, I thought it was really good. Um, you know, I mean, both these guys. I mean, they they can go when you know when when they when they have to. I mean, and Roman works hard, and, and so you know, I wasn't surprised that this was good. I, I, th- I thought it was even better than it was going to be. Um, so yeah, and I, I definitely think it. Uh, I mean, it's a clean finish, and and uh, they're going with the Wyatts and the Undertaker. So I think that uh, that ends this feud, thankfully. Um, yeah. Unless uh, you know, we'll see. I mean, Undertaker. I don't know if they do just Undertaker and Kane against the Wyatts at Survivor Series, or if they throw Roman, uh, Roman and Dean Ambrose in there. So we'll see. Yeah, Bray Wyatt absolutely stuck Roman Reigns with that Sister Abigail, too. Holy crap, that was the best Sister Abigail I've ever seen. Uh, I bought that as a finish for a second. I was like, he's really going over, and he didn't. Yeah. Also, Roman Reigns did an awesome transition out of that into a schoolboy roll-up uh, one time. He's getting, he's like making, not making improvements, making leaps in the ring. Uh, I'm I'm really impressed with his improvement. And he's kind of going against those people that are like, that are saying that WWE can't develop their own guys because he is a WWE developed guy. Mm-hmm. 
It, yeah. This isn't this isn't one of the indie guys who was already polished and then sent to FCW or NXT. This is a WWE guy. So yeah, that's and he, he's doing well for himself. Uh interested to see where he goes from here, and we'll talk about that uh in a bit. New Day faced off with the Dudley Boys, and they beat the Dudley Boys. They used their heel tactics, uh they hit the Dudley Boys or hit I believe it was Devon with uh the trombone. And this is after Kofi pulled an Eddie Guerrero and uh, feigned getting hit with the trombone and then passed it to Bubba Ray, which I thought was was really cool. These guys are excellent heels. No Xavier Woods. He uh, got married, was it? Yeah, yeah, he got married. I think it was today. Yeah, and he's been doing a lot of press for uh, WWE 2K16, as he should be, because that video game channel has exploded. It's got... Like 220,000 subscribers since this summer already. Uh, I know a lot of people who don't really care that much for WWE but are are fans of the gaming channel, which is kind of cool because uh, it's another case of WWE being able to uh, reach into a different demographic. It's just they're not able to bring that to their TV. But New Day is awesome. I I actually have a friend, and he said that the reason that he started to watch WWE again is because of New Day and because of the trombone specifically. (laughs) So I, I feel bad for him the other two hours and 45 minutes out of the evening that he watches the show and probably isn't, enter, isn't entertained. But what did you think of this match and the decision for New Day to win? I thought the match was, you know, kind of average. I think the Dudleys, the Dudleys got stale pretty quick. And uh, Oh, yeah. You know, they, they get the pop and everything, but then I think fans kind of lose interest in them as soon as the match thing, you know, starts. So, um you know, it, was, it wasn't a clean finish, but it wasn't. Uh, it, it seemed like it was ending the program, uh, but at the same time, uh, where did the new day go? Because uh, they, they didn't really have a, another team really ready. So we'll see. It, it looked like it was uh, writing off this feud. I, I I agree with the decision. I think the new day should have won. I think the Dudleys just uh, something missing. And uh, they they don't exactly have an extensive offensive repertoire or anything. To, uh, their matches are kind of cut and paste. Yeah, same same thing every time. And they are. I mean, they help the division. That's that's absolutely true. But I would I would think that this would maybe extend just into a like maybe a tables elimination match at uh, at Survivor Series. They they should do that. I mean, they need. I, it would surprise me if they had the Dudley Boys in a program like this, and they kept getting screwed over, and they didn't get their tables match. But you know, I don't know, and because uh, I mean, it looks like the Wyatt family's going in a different direction. They're not going to be coming after the tag titles, so uh, who knows? That's the thing about this show. I was I was going to wait until later to say this, but there are a lot of acts and titles that do not have programs now, or at look, least look like they don't. Uh, the Kevin Owens Ryback thing, uh, they should be done. Seth Rollins and Kane, they should be done. Uh, New Day and the Dudleys, they could be done. Charlotte and Nikki, by all means, should be done. Reigns and Wyatt, that too. Uh, John Cena's leaving, so Del Rio, you don't know what's going to go on there. Uh and we saw that one program set up with Undertaker and Bray Wyatt. But this is an interesting uh, – tomorrow's Raw is going to be interesting, at least on paper. It's going to be interesting. I'll never, I'll never hold out optimism before the show that it will be interesting. But yeah. um, a lot of directions that are going to be sent – you know, a lot of things are going to be determined tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah, hopefully they're going uh, somewhere new with, uh, with all these guys because they've all been kind of locked in the same feuds for a while now. Yeah, every single match on the show was a rematch. And as I mentioned before, I like I like first time matchups on pay per view. I mean, not first time ever because they're going to do the house show circuit together and get to know each other and stuff. That's that's natural. But but yeah, I think that uh, they need fresh matchups for pay per view and stuff. Uh, not a fresh matchup was Charlotte versus Nikki Bella. Everybody, every Bella, every PCB member banned from ringside. Uh, Charlotte got the win over Nikki. I thought it was a pretty good match. There was a very scary spot. And I know you know the one I'm talking about, that German suplex that uh, Charlotte backflipped out of, and they almost both died. Uh, Maybe they should not have done that. I I actually missed that. uh... Oh, my gosh. So Charlotte standing up on the top rope, 
and I think Nikki Bella's on the second rope. And you could see, you could totally see the spot from a mile away. But, um, well, one, uh, Nikki Bella was trying to get into place and basically buried her face in Charlotte's ass for about 20 seconds, which there are going to be a million gifs of that all over the internet. But she goes to German suplex Charlotte, and Charlotte just backflips and kind of lands on her feet. But they kind of came down on Nikki Bella's head a little bit. It was a very, very terrifying spot that they should absolutely never do it again and whatever agent approved that should probably not do that anymore uh i think uh, I, I thought the match itself was pretty decent though uh did you how did you feel about it yeah i thought it was good um i i, I missed uh i missed a little bit in there uh, my my daughters came in and uh so I, I missed about five minutes but from what i saw it was good and uh yeah I, you mean to tell me they weren't interested in Charlotte versus Nikki Bella? No, no. I am shocked. I know. I'm shocked that they wouldn't immediately gravitate towards the screen when they see Nikki Bella. Yeah. Uh, I thought that after the match, Paige was really great, low key, and like kind of hogging Charlotte's attention when they were congratulating. If you if you'll notice, she was like pulling Charlotte away from Becky and towards herself when they were celebrating. I thought that was kind of funny. Uh, there was also a really cool spot in this match where Nikki Bella hit an Alabama slam on the apron. Um, I have spoken out against, like, Darren Young will do apron spots two minutes into an opening match on Superstars. And I think that's stupid. I think that's ignorant. That's the hardest part of the ring. It should be sold that way. Uh, and when you do a backdrop two minutes into a opening ma- an opening match on Superstars, and then... Four minutes later, you can't pin the person. It kind of devalues that type of situation. Uh, but it's good that they're given the, at least the opportunity to do that. Do you think that this transitional period between divas and women is kind of done with the Nikki Bella losing the rematch? Um, I have no I, I, I have no idea. I'm sure they're going to keep going the way they've been going with the same nine women and, and circling them out. But yeah, I think Nikki's... You know, it's just Nikki's out now, and they'll probably put Sasha Banks in. Is she's been uh, she's been protected, and I don't think she's lost yet on TV, has she? Uh, other than NXT, but uh, I'm gonna check that out. Uh, well, I mean, she's been getting big wins, especially on SmackDown, which I know nobody watches, but there's actually some good matches on SmackDown, and she's been winning. Like she pinned, she's pinned Nikki ba- or Nikki uh, Bella a couple times, clean as a sheet on smackdown and i think she pinned her on raw once too uh i would think that for some they they may do the triple threat three-way elimination at survivor series i just have a feeling they'll do that uh because why wouldn't you if you've got these three teams still together you probably just should um yeah i mean i they really need to just break them up but I, a survivor series i mean it's teams versus teams so i could see them doing that but uh, man, it's it it's just not doing anything for anyone. And yes, yeah, Sasha Banks has not lost a singles match on the main roster on TV. Yeah. She's lost some tag matches, but that's it. Right, and I, um, even in the tag matches, I don't think she took the the falls. I think you know it was always like Naomi or Tamina. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so so she's been protected as she should be because she is she is a diamond in in this situation. Next up, we had Seth Rollins versus Kane. I thought this was an a average to good match, con- considering that I knew the winner. Nothing great, really. Uh, I hope this program is over. All respect to Glenn Jacobs, but it's not working. It needs to, it needs to move on. And yeah. where, where, What did you think of it, and where do you think each of these guys goes? It, it just seemed, uh, seemed like a nothing match. Um, but yeah, it was a clean finish, and it's uh, it was great that you know they had the clean finish because that means it's it's done. So I, I think they've realized that this this feud has not been uh, helping the product at all, and uh, that it, it's it's time to get away quickly. You know what's interesting? There's a guy uh, I think it's Ryan Mark that sends me he he sends me this stuff, and I never paid much attention to it until he he brought it up. He like pays attention to the YouTube video counts for the WWE videos, and he would like send me information. And Kane was getting like a substantial 
like a, a giant por- a percentage more views than like anything else on the show, which is really weird to me. Like his segments on the YouTube stuff, which is stuff that we can look at and measure. We can't, you know, we don't get the the breakdowns all the time of of the quarter hours for the ratings. I think that's weird because obviously this program hasn't helped the ratings. Um, right. Their their record lows right now, but. Uh, somebody on the internet's interested. I don't know. Maybe Kane's mom watches it on repeat over and over again. But yeah, oh, that's interesting. Yeah, and, and that's something that I've kind of started to pay attention to because you kind of see what segments that people go back and watch. Or, I mean, I remember the one time I missed Raw this year when I, when I had that power outage earlier in the year, and you filled in for me on the podcast. Well, I watched the videos uh, on YouTube right after, and I felt like I didn't miss anything. So I could see a lot of people doing that. Yeah, I missed I missed Raw a couple weeks ago, um, and it's one of the first times that I just didn't even bother going back and watching it. And I just went and watched the YouTube clips, and that was more than enough. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's pretty nuts. Uh, I remember one of my friends said, "Hey, should I watch WWE again?" Because he knows I cover it. And I'm like, "No, if if you get the WWE Network and you watch This Week in WWE, or if you get." A channel that has AM Raw. I don't know if that's still a thing, but if you get AM Raw, just watch that, or just watch SmackDown because they show you everything that happened on Raw anyway. Right. Uh, and I had somebody saying uh, on Twitter that they think that uh, matches on the pay per view should be more fast paced, and I agree. But it's it's a little difficult when you have a lot of times three and a half hours of yeah. in ring action to fill with no promos. Right. Yeah. Uh, speaking of filling up time, we had Kevin Owens versus Ryback for the Intercontinental title. This was a pretty short match. Clean cut win for Kevin Owens. Uh, was I the only person that saw him cutting that promo on Magic Johnson outside and thought he was going to bring up HIV? No, God. I, I, I could not see them doing that. <laughs> I, was, I couldn't see them doing that. I could see him doing that. Yeah. I absolutely couldn't see WWE doing that. Not not at all. He but. would not be champion much longer. <laughs> exactly. Uh, oh, where do you think either of these guys goes from here? I mean, it's 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 a it's a weird situation we're in. Yeah. Well, Ryback, you know, he's he's going back down. You'd get you you guess. <laughs> um, Owens, I don't know. You could you you could do Ambrose. Uh, you know, um, that would be, be a, great. That'd be a fun feud. Um, but I think they want Ambrose up higher right now. Yeah, um, but yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't know who, who, who else who, who you'd go with because, um, you know, they've already done. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. There, I think there's. It's weird because they they did the the Dolph Ziggler match with Owens and blew it off on like main event. Uh, Cesaro is always an option, but it looks like he's going with Stardust. Yeah, and- I don't like Neville in that spot. I'm sure they'd have great matches. I'm sure they'd have fantastic matches, but am I the only one that, like, when Neville comes out, I'm just like, ah, well, something that doesn't matter is about to happen. Right. That's just the feeling I get when he comes out, and I hate that because he's such a talented performer. But when he comes out, I'm just like, well, nothing of note is going to happen. Uh, Like what Vince said on the podcast last week, I don't like Kevin Owens, like, running away from people. I like the way he was booked the first few months in NXT – where he's like, hey, guys, I'm going to beat you up, and I'm going to beat you up because it makes me money. Mm-hmm. Uh, too bad, so sad. That's what he needs to do. He needs to be just, you know, he has this title, not because he cares about the title, but because he cares about the money that's involved with it. And, uh, yeah, there, there are a lot of options. I just, yeah, this is the first time I've been, like, I wouldn't say excited for Raw, but I'm intrigued about what direction things are going to go because, we may not get a real idea of where some of these are going to go for even longer because with Survivor Series, we're going to see a lot of guys just teamed up for traditional Survivor Series matches as well. Well, they've mostly been uh, doing like one or two of the traditional Survivor Series matches. You know, they don't do yeah. the, the whole pay-per-view anymore. I, I can't remember the last time they've done that. So, yeah, so they're still they're still going to have to, you know, fill out the undercard. And, you know, you got Kane... Uh, I mean, he's still. I mean, you could throw him in with Kevin Owens. Uh, you know, it's it's something to do. It's it doesn't make you know doesn't make me excited at all about it. But but yeah, there's a 
Yeah, they're, they're pretty much just got to mix and match. <laughs> that sounds like something WWE would do is, hey, we have Kevin Owens. Who should he work with next? Kane. That yeah. seems like yeah. that young upstart Kane. Right. Let's, let's get him up there. <laughs> next up was our main event, Brock Lesnar versus The Undertaker. And no matter how much interest I have before the match, as soon as these two guys – well, really, if Brock Lesnar gets in the cage or gets in – well, a cage, a ring, it doesn't matter what. As soon as he gets in a ring with somebody, I'm instantly pumped, and the crowd was hot for this match. Uh, this was interesting. They both bled a lot. Uh, Brock Lesnar especially, he had to get cleaned up. Was that? Did you see if that was hard way or if he bladed or what? I couldn't tell. It, it, you know, um, I, yeah, I couldn't tell. Do you think Vince McMahon says anything to him or Undertaker when they walk back through that curtain about that well you know they find batista for it uh when when he was on top so um i don't know i lesnar is such a unique animal that you know that i could see them just letting it go because that's just, that's probably not the uh the fight you want with them yeah i mean like man because unless you can prove it you know that he, he yeah bladed Oh, it's going to be much harder uh, in that cage because I don't know if you read Jericho's book, but they they brought him and Batista into a room and showed him a camera angle he has never seen before or since that they have set up at every arena that caught them blading. Yeah. And uh, I doubt they have those. Maybe they do have them in the cage. I don't know. But uh, Vinnie Mac, he's a, he's a slick one, I tell you. Yeah. Also, uh, they tore the ring up and... I thought that was really cool. Like, you have something that you don't always see. I mean, I've seen it in TNA when, when Bully Ray did it and he tore out the ring and uh, pile drive somebody on there. That was cool. And that was very similar to this. I, I thought it was a cool thing to throw into a match when you've seen these guys between now and 12 years ago wrestle 10 times. They did something new. They did something that made me say, well, that's cool. That's different. Yeah, and that's the thing with these guys is you just never know what's going to happen. Yeah, because you know Lesnar, his matches are always pretty different. Um, and yeah, this was uh this was no different. And uh, yeah, I thought it was awesome. I mean, Lesnar, he, you know, he gets a lot of crap for not working a full time schedule, which I don't think he should. Um, and uh, he's just awesome. I mean, his matches are just fun. He, there's like a real sense of danger also when he's when he's wrestling. Like you, you feel like he could really hurt somebody, and you know. So a lot of those moves, you're like, ah, you know. Do you remember the uh, the the knee spot in his return match with John Cena at Extreme Rules where he just l- jumped oh, yeah. and almost killed himself? He just doesn't. He has no concern for his own safety, I guess, but. Yeah, I mean, it, he, he works hard for the. I mean, he yeah. works hard every time he's in that ring. He doesn't follow a formula, and that's good. He shouldn't follow a formula. He's special. He should have special matches, and he does. I don't know if it's like his idea, Undertaker's idea, an agent's idea, Vince's idea, but to like tear up the ring, uh, to do these things that are different. When he ground and pounded Undertaker and just beat the piss out of him, that was great. That was awesome. You never see that. Yeah, yeah, his matches are just definitely they're the most memorable of uh of you know the the people on the roster, I think. They're just they're brutal uh and they're just, you know, they they just don't follow a formula. He has legitimacy too. Like you see him do that, and I saw him punching Undertaker. And Undertaker's a big MMA fan, so he knows. He knows what can get a reaction out of people. 5 or 6 years ago, or even today, if if that were anybody else, it might not have get, gotten a reaction. But when Brock Lesnar stands over top of you and rains down punches on your face and he's stiffing you with them, yeah, that's going to get a reaction. Uh, Brock Lesnar won. Do you think that's the right call? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, I do too. Lesnar's around for years. Taker, you know, who knows? Mm-hmm. Uh, who knows if he'll – I mean, I'm sure he'll be at WrestleMania. and that'll. But I'm guessing that's probably it. So, you know, that you got Survivor Series and – and, and mania so he's got like two more matches maybe and uh but man you know for for his age and man that guy i mean he can go and you know he i mean this match was great and uh you got to give credit to both guys and 
And I'm, I'm always one of those that believes that when someone's on their way out, they should be, you know, they should be putting the, a new star over. So, or not, you know, I guess Lesnar's not a new star, but yeah, you know, but but he's he's got more left than exactly Taker. I mean, he signed a three year deal, so right. Um, so yeah, I thought it was a it was the right decision, and uh, it'll be interesting to see if they they'll probably. I mean, his team will probably win at Survivor Series. And then do you have him go over whoever he faces at Mania? And, oh, gosh, I hope it's not Braun Strowman. Yeah, that's – that's Jesus, that would be bad. Uh, speaking of Braun Strowman, the Wyatt family came out. Uh, all four of them, Luke Harper was back, and they attacked Undertaker. I thought that the uh, the four-man group looked – it looked pretty pretty damn good, pretty impressive, pretty intimidating. It, it accomplished the job. I was waiting for Brock to come out and make the save, but he didn't. Kane didn't make the save. Roman and Dean didn't make the save. I guess they were already out celebrating. Um, but yeah, do you think this goes to leads to Survivor Series or something else? Um, yeah, I think it's just for Survivor Series. I hope it ends there. I mean, they might do something at Survivor Series to build up Mania, and you know, if they are going with Strowman. Uh, you know, they could uh, do something there where, you know, Strowman just destroys Taker and then Taker gets his, his win at, at Mania. So, um, but yeah, that's uh, that's the direction. So Undertaker's, you know, worked more this year than... than Gosh, uh, years. Years, yeah. Yeah. I mean, worked the Mexico Tour, SummerSlam, this show, uh, WrestleMania. I remember when he had that the ambitious uh, idea to work with the shield a few years ago and he got hurt uh, very quickly he got hurt i think it was in england wasn't it yeah i think it was from the shield's uh, triple power bomb spot yeah yeah and ever since well and before then you know, it was the one a year type of thing but glad to see him. i mean he's contributing he's not he's he's helping out he's in the right spot i used to think that these part time versus part time things couldn't work out but it absolutely has for them uh, yeah yeah, how would you grade this show? I'd give it a, I'd give it a, a, a solid B. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I don't think there wasn't a bad match on the show, in my opinion. Uh, there were a couple of good matches. Uh, I thought Lesnar Undertaker just was all kinds of awesome. These two, Brock Lesnar especially, is magic. He could have a match with me or you, and it would be incredible because he would just kill us, and everybody would love it. Uh, yeah, really good stuff. And uh yeah, we wanted to get into a little news, uh, which there was there wasn't a lot of news, but I wanted to clear up something before we got into fan questions. Uh this week the UFC reinstated John Jones, their former UFC light heavyweight champion, after a hit and run incident caused him to be suspended and had his uh championship uh basically revoked, vacated, which now belongs to Daniel Cormier. I had a lot of people asking me why it is that he got reinstated, but Nick Diaz is not reinstated. And I know a lot of you aren't familiar with the differences and all that. The John Jones issue is a UFC issue. The Nick Diaz issue is a Nevada State Athletic Commission issue. Nick Diaz has failed several drug tests in Nevada, and because he disregarded the rules, they threw the hammer down on him and said five years. Now, that doesn't mean that it's the right thing to do, but... That's what happened. It's not up to the UFC. If he fights anywhere else uh, for the UFC, that's going to get them in hot water with the Nevada Athletic Commission, a place that they do business quite often. John Jones was uh, given, I think he has to do 72 public appearances for charity, and he's on supervised probation. And people brought up the cocaine thing. John Jones did not – well, one, he wasn't even supposed to be tested for cocaine in December at all. That's not a part of the Nevada Athletic Commission's criteria, mainly because they don't try to be vice cops. They try to police when people are in camp. He was technically not, quote, unquote, in competition for that. That's why it doesn't follow the same guidelines as Nick Diaz. If he would have been busted for cocaine prior to his fight, different story. Nick Diaz was busted for weed – the day of his fight, and the circumstances surrounding that were way, way different. Uh, There were a couple of tests that showed up negative, one that showed up positive, and that's that's a different thing in its own. But ultimately, the UFC can control what happens to John Jones. They cannot control what happens to Nick Diaz in that situation. 
So that that's the main difference. It's not the UFC refusing to let Nick Diaz fight. It's the Nevada State Athletic Commission, which governs that type of thing. Uh, and the Nevada State Athletic Commission really has no jurisdiction over Jones's situation. Uh, but yeah, that, that's long and the short of it. If you have any other questions about that, uh, just you know, tweet me at Sean Ross Sapp or just post the question in uh, our thread here. But yeah, our reader questions. We uh, had a person asking, was the Ambrose Reign segment teasing a tag title run? Uh, I don't know. I tell you, in, in storyline, they, they damn well should be. They're 12-2 and two this year as a tag team. Yeah. Um, I, don't, I feel like they would need to be in higher positions right now with uh, John Cena's injury and, and needing to fill the top of that card. Because, I mean, if Orton's out too... And we don't know how long Orton's out for. Um, I mean, they, they've got no one. they got Rollins, and, uh, you know, they'll probably still do Kane on the house shows. But, yeah. I mean, who, really, who do you got? Like, who, who who's Rollins going to feud with? Could could New Day versus Ambrose and Reigns be, like, a top-of-the-line program? No. I don't. I, I mean. Don't think so either. I don't think so, yeah. I the, think the tag titles hard. have been positioned in a certain way. Yeah. Uh, all, all the titles other than the world title and the U.S. title when John Cena has it are, are you know, have been mm-hmm. positioned in a certain way. So, um, yeah, it's... Uh, I tell you, there's this bearded guy that I think they could use right now. He'd be pretty good. Bearded guy. Be, it's bearded guy. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty good. That Daniel Bryan, yeah. he's not bad. Well, you know, it's uh, concussions are it's serious business, so... I know. Um, you know, it's good on their part that they're not being selfish and they are looking out for his best interest. But something if- somebody brought up to me about concussions, actually, I made a comment about Bubba Ray Dudley doing back body drops and how crazy they look now for the reaction that they get and the type of bump people take. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I don't remember seeing one for several years. And somebody brought up, they're like, well, Cody Rhodes got a concussion off of one. And I was like, that's probably why we didn't see one for a long time in WWE because. That's how they get about things like that. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It uh Yeah, I mean that's it's I mean that stuff causes long-term damage, so you know, it's it's good that they're uh that they uh are strict about that stuff. Yeah. Next question, do you think Matt Riddle could portray a Brock Lesnar type character? Um No. Personally, no. I think he's more of he has the legitimacy, but if you've ever spoken to him, which I have several times, he's more of an RVD type of, yeah. hey, I'm really good at actually kicking your ass, and I'm going to be a jerk about it. And he's picking stuff up pretty well. I'll give him that. And he's at the Monster Factory, which, I mean, you're a great place to be to learn wrestling. And he's on WWE's radar. I know that much because they liked him at his tryout, and they got him a gig with Evolve. Um, yeah, no, the dude's got charisma. Yeah, but I think the RVD thing is a pretty good. Uh, it's a pretty good. Um, yeah. Comparison. Do you do you remember the promo he cut against British people? Yeah. Oh, that yeah. was if if you all haven't seen it, uh, it's great. Just look up uh, Matt Riddle, British people. After a UFC event, he cut the most amazing promo against British people because I guess one had accidentally or one had spit in his mouth. And it was just the most incredible thing, and they started to book him in Europe a lot after that to fight. But this is a guy who legitimately has not lost an MMA fight in four years, and if he had had his head on straight and not failed drug tests, I think he could have cracked the top 15 in the welterweight division. He is a good fighter. He absolutely is. Uh, He wasn't, you know, Brock Lesnar-esque or anything like that, but he is a legitimate guy. He's not just some scrub that decided to do this. He was getting offers from Bellator and every company but the UFC after they released him. And then he said – it was funny because it was actually in an interview I did with him last year. I asked him if he ever considered doing pro wrestling. He was like, eh, I don't know, maybe. And then a few months later I heard he was going to train. So, no, I think think he's got a great future. Hopefully um, hopefully, – hopefully he gets booking help because if he's just booked like everyone else, you know. And he shouldn't be. He is he, even though he is not Brock Lesnar, he needs to be special, and they can make him special. He does not need to be Steve Blackman. He can be something different. So, uh, yeah, I, I yeah, that's I think he can be very good. Uh, actually, 
why the F Vince think that always Lesnar need to win? Well, because Brock Lesnar needed to win this match. Yeah, absolutely. That would be <laughs> dumb if he's not, you know, like yes, he is in, I think arguably, um, the biggest star that they have, um, you know, between it's it, him and Cena are very different, but yeah, as far as, uh, I don't know the ratings. It's not like the ratings really change much on the shows he's on, but he yeah. does add an importance when he's in a feud or in a match that no one else does. Undertaker too, but more Lesnar. Why in Lord's name did Del Rio get the quickest, easiest win over Cena in the last decade? I asked. Let me answer that question with a question. Person who asked that question: Did you watch SummerSlam last year? <laughs> Because Brock Lesnar beat the hell out of John Cena. Uh, I think it was just because Del Rio's a big name. He's a former world champion, former Royal Rumble winner. Uh, he's been in a title match at WrestleMania, a couple of them actually. Uh, Return, got a big pop, and John Cena's leaving. Yeah, no, they, 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 it was absolutely right. I mean, they could have made it a little harder to beat him, especially when they, you know, the last year he's kicking out of everyone's finishers you know several times but um but you know i i didn't have a problem with it they better protect that kick because i know they did that kick finish because they didn't want cena to tap out to the arm bar yeah uh but they better protect the hell out of that though if they're they're having john cena lose to that move in uh gosh i don't know how much maybe 11 minutes was it it was a very short yeah, it was match a short match yeah uh, I'll, I'll look it up, but yeah, they, they need to, we, we've talked about them protecting arm bar moves. Wow. The match was seven minutes and 46 seconds according, well, Wikipedia, not the most reliable source, but wow. Yeah. Seven minutes and 45 seconds. Damn. Mm-hmm. What, uh, well, this is a ring of honor spoiler. You guys was Roderick strong, the right guy to end Jay lethal's TV title reign. Um, as somebody who covers ring of honor, Roderick Strong's having a fantastic year, one of the best years in wrestling this year. But I think a guy like Moose would have been a lot better off in that spot because he's a guy that they probably want to keep around, and he is a guy who will probably end up being in WWE, and he's he can be a he can be a mainstream star. Yeah, yeah, um, but for the time being, I think it's fine. Um, yeah. And it's the TV title, and uh, yeah, and yeah, Roderick Strong has just been fantastic in the ring. So, and they're building towards that uh, AJ Styles versus Jay Lethal match. Like, like they've got the hype going. I mean, we we've talked before about how other promotions should promote their matches months ahead of time. Uh, Final battle is in December, and they're the main event set. Yeah, we know what it is, and same thing with New Japan a few weeks later. I can't wait to cover those two shows. I mean. Jay Lethal versus AJ Styles, man, two guys that TNA were just like, well, we're done with you. And then they're having, they just turn into these juggernauts on, uh, on the indie scene and Ring of Honor. So good for them. Uh, I, like I said, really excited to cover Final Battle. Let's see, who do you think is winning the Royal Rumble? Uh, I'd almost have to say Reigns again. Um, I mean, you would think the. I, I don't. I don't know uh, if it'd be if Rollins will still be champ by the time WrestleMania comes around. You would. You would think it, it would make sense that he that he was. I mean, they could do a disputed finish between like Ambrose and Reigns, and that's exactly what I want. Threat. That's exactly what I want is the double elimination, Ambrose and Reigns. That's what I'm hoping for. What'll actually happen? It's I don't know. Probably like Triple H will win or something like that or the rock or somebody that's like 42 years old uh do you think there will be a brothers of destruction reunion at survivor series to fight the wyatts yep uh i do too yeah they they worked them on the mexican tour and they were very tight-lipped about well at least on their social media they were like the undertaker's there but they didn't really say who they were working and stuff like that right yeah it uh and you got to wonder if that was like the plan all along, and and so those matches were booked for a reason, you know, that to kind of get them familiar with each other. Um, but yeah, it uh, it'll be. I don't know if they'll do a two on four, you know, or bring in two more people. 
Um, but yeah, I definitely think that's that's the plan. Would an NXT guy have been better off to take the title off Cena than Del Rio? Uh, I don't know. I don't think so because if you take a guy off NXT, the, that roster is going to be really thin. Yeah, I just think right now with Cena and Orton gone, you need someone kind of established um, mm-hmm. to you know kind of fill in that upper upper mid card. You know, so I think I think it was between those two choices between NXT guy. In Del Rio, I, I think Del Rio is the right call. Are you happy that Zeb Coulter is managing Del Rio instead of Ricardo? Yes, I am. Yes, yeah. Yes. Okay. I mean, the dude's a awesome on the mic, um, yeah. and at a time when the promos are kind of lagging, I think he'll help bring something. It'll it'll be interesting to see where they go with it, but I, I do hope they keep him heel because both guys, Del Rio and and Zeb Coulter, are much better off as heels. Yeah, yeah. Zeb Coulter's the only guy I know that could probably get over as a heel, as a Democrat and a Republican. That guy is, he's just great. He understands it. Uh, And the last question, what is next for Brock Lesnar? That's a good question. It's weird. Usually um, this time of year, it's pretty, pretty obvious where they're headed, you know, with, with the top matches at WrestleMania. Um, It seems like Lesnar's done for the rest of the year. Um, I don't know if he'll be back for the Royal Rumble or just right after to, for for Mania season, but I mean you you've done Taker. Um, I mean the only other person I could really think of, and if they're going to go with Rock and Triple H, the only other person I could think of would be um, and assuming Austin's out uh, would probably be Roman Reigns. But then then what do you have you know as a world title match? So yeah, I think that. I just want that shield th- triple threat so much, and if yeah. they do the shield triple threat, I think that's a big time. That's a huge match. Uh, I don't know. They kn- well, they know it. I think they know it's a huge match because we haven't seen it yet. We've not seen those three just those three face off with each other. And I feel like if they didn't think it was a big match, we would have seen it on like Night of Champions or something like, or some random Raw. Yeah, I think if they were going in that direction, Ambrose would have been protected more up until now. Um, yeah, but but we'll see. I mean, I don't know. It just for what's supposed to be the biggest WrestleMania of all time, that just doesn't seem to me like the world title match on the biggest WrestleMania of all time. Yeah, they got some it, stuff. It seems to me like a SummerSlam main event. You know what I mean? Yeah, they have they have their work cut out for them for sure. But uh, yeah, guys, we'll be back tomorrow night, uh, and then the next day I'll have a WWE 2K16 review. Really excited about that. Uh, but yeah, we'll be back tomorrow night with Vince Russo, right? Yeah, yeah, Russo's back tomorrow. Uh, I got, we'll be, uh, we have a great interview with Scott Hall that'll be going up this week. You got your interview with Bill Apter that'll also be on the yep. site this week. So it'll be a, it'll be a busy week. Indeed. Uh, Raj, where can they follow you on Twitter? Uh, Raj Geary 303. Sean Ross Sap right here uh, on Twitter. Also, of course, Wrestling Inc. Don't forget to subscribe and, and rate us on iTunes. That does help. Uh, also, we're going to try to get this up on YouTube. So, if you are not, if you prefer to watch uh, via that way, the, these will be up on there because uh, we've had some requests for that. But yeah, until next time, talk to you later. <laughs>